right, everybody. I'm back. And guess what? I got a special guest. Now, everybody knows Mark. The guy is famous. He's been on TV. He helps inventors. He's the real deal. Back East. He's not going to give you any BS. I said it. BS. He's going to give you the real deal. All right. Venture capitalist Mark Porton. He's brought hundreds of products to market. I guarantee that you have at least one item in your house that I was responsible for. The second he's convinced of a product, he'll invest. That's a tough, that's a big word for me, isn't it, Mark? You know that. Okay. All right. Mark, I want to talk about Shark Tank. All right. Because okay. it's been going on, I think, a decade now. I think it's 10 years. And I know a lot of people are watching it. I watch it. I don't watch it as much as I used to. Um, I like the show, parts of the show I like. I like that it gets people engaged. I like that it's got people off the couch or thinking about it. But... It's not real at all. What's your opinion? Well, it's, it's funny because uh, total transparency um, right off the bat is I watch it. I watch it on a consistent basis. I just watch it because I find it entertaining. Um, but I mean, the reality is, I mean, I was on All American Makers and uh, a lot of those deals didn't go down, even though they went down on television, because it, if you just think about it in real life, what if, what if they make an offer to somebody and they're a million two in debt? And they didn't. They didn't disclose it. Well, yeah, but they bought thirty percent of of uh, one point two million in debt. I mean, that that's the reality of it. But but it's a great show. I I love it. But but it's not really real. Try, well, some of it's real. They do take some premier entrepreneurs and make millionaires out of them. They do. The thing that it's done to the invention community, it's fucked it up a little bit. To be honest with you, okay. I mean, it's. It's getting people who normally wouldn't yell out a dollar amount for a percentage of that. Like, I want 250000 for 10% of my company. And it's like, hey, dude, you haven't sold shit. It's a prototype. What, what do you need 250000 for? And we've spoken about this in the past, Stephen. In real life, okay. you need – some people need marketing. Some people need manufacturing. Some people need all of these things okay. that don't require but, money. But, Mark – even if you get a deal, and like you said, sometimes they show a deal on TV and it breaks apart. I think that's probably pretty well known at this point. But, okay, you get the deal. But is that shark really going to help you? I mean, they're only going to use their skill set. But trust me, isn't it brand building for the sharks? You don't tell me they're going to drop everything they're going to do and help you take orders and they're going to help you do well. Don't they just open doors? Yeah, of course. But listen, you're buying their Rolodex. You're buying their contact because when one of them makes a call on your behalf, it's right. over. You don't think they're going to roll up their sleeves and get in the warehouse and pack shit. They're not going to do that. I mean, but, okay. but because they've got a whole bunch of Okay, so you're, you're selling an, part of your business, your equity, for, for a door opener, for a contact. Right. For a, a referral, for a testimony. If the shark's involved, hey, this is a good thing. So that's what you're paying for? You're paying for instant credibility okay. because if one right. of those sharks makes a call on your behalf, right. it's over. Okay. Right. I, I don't okay. care if you got a left-handed widget. It doesn't matter. You, okay. If they get behind it and they're making a call to their friend, which is in the C-suite of one of these companies, that's worth the money right there. Even if they didn't give you a fucking nickel. Okay. So, care. okay. All right. Okay. There's value that. Okay. There's value. But Mark, come on. What about when they say, hey, they, you, know, you're, you, you get there and they say, hey, well, do you have any, what type of protection do you have? Can anybody do this? Oh, you don't have a patent? Come on. Is that real well, or not real? Um, that, that, that leads itself to a bit of credibility because I would, do, I would do the same thing. The difference is if you don't have sales, they send you on your way. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. So 
in something that I do, which is a bit different, and I'm not a shark. I'm not a shark. I'm not. I don't have that notoriety like they do. But I will take a prototype. I will take something and work with the inventor to build it from scratch. But I guess they have the availability where they don't have to do that. They can say how what what sales. Then they speak. The sales okay. based on you know the the valuation, and they go, how are you asking for three million dollars right. for something you sold ten thousand dollars of? But I with just, all American makers, you, we would do a prototype because we okay. would pioneer from the beginning. See, I like I like watching it. I mean, it's inter it's, Me too. It, it's a TV show. Come on, everybody, it's it's there. It's a TV show. It's great for advertisement. They want to show. How they can take an idea and six months later because of the shark's effort next thing you know they're getting in all these doors things are happening i think a lot of those inventors would get there anyway i think the guys that are successful would be successful with or without a shark just because they they have that drive but also i don't think it's right for them to sh you know when they ask these questions do you have a patent and if you don't why even bother because there's other competition i don't like when they do that because i don't think you need one but sales, yes. Eyeballs, yes. You have proven results, yes. You have a good work ethic, yes. Those are the things for me to invest in the person. But when they're saying things like intellectual property, they sound old to me. That sounds like old school, not, not new, because most situations, even if you're Apple, you can't protect your technology. So why yeah, are you asking some poor inventor? Here's where they come from. They come from if I like it and I and I'm worth four point three billion dollars and I like it, I could throw money at it and crush you like a bug. That's what they're telling you. That's why they're asking those questions, because they're saying anyone with a lot of money can crush you. So do you have any type of protection that we can that we can hook into? That's what it is. The other thing that I like is it's like spilling gasoline on a forest fire. It is it's instantaneous. The viewership that they have mixed with even if you don't get a deal. You, you've done something well, just by making the pitch. Well, I do believe if you're on Shark Tank, you're going to leverage that forever in a day. And you've got a they lot do. of eyeballs, but also there's a lot of exposure there, too. I've heard a lot of nightmare stories. You go on Shark Tank, you show it, you don't get the deal, you get all the advertisement. Next thing you know, the competitors are right on it and they're, they're coming out with your product because you've already done all the work and they have better distribution. They're bigger than you and they get the product out faster. Yeah, but I mean, no matter what you do, Stephen, I mean, yes, I, I mean, in my case, I try to get back to each and every inventor. I try to be a good guy. I give everybody time. There's still a handful of people out there that say, oh, Mark Courtney, piece of shit. I mean, there's, it's just the it's the numbers game. And no, you can never make everybody happy. So, yes, you're going to hear horror shows. You're going to hear horror shows about me. You probably have a couple of horror shows. No, but, but, I don't have. No, no, no. Yeah, you're full of shit. You're full of shit. <laughs> but, uh, but that's, uh, you know, that, and we all have it because you can never make 100 percent of the people happy. No. So you got to take it. with okay. a, You got to take it where it comes from. That's, so, that's OK, let's I, let's talk about this. Is this show going to continue for the next 10 years? Because particularly I, I think it's good for the industry. I think it's good. It gets people off the couch. It gets them thinking. Kids are watching it. Parents are watching it. I love, I love that part of it. But is it going to last? Yeah, I think it's going to go on for as long as the sharks want it to go on. Okay. They bring on guest sharks. They keep you interested. And the beautiful thing about it is, is anticipation. You never know what's going to walk through that door. Mm -hmm. And that right there will keep you on the edge of your seat every single time. Okay. Hey, Mark. I think you're kind of a shark. No, not really. I'm more of a guppy. Okay. All right. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching. We're going to do another one of these. Mark, thanks for coming back. Your insights are priceless. I know you guys are watching this. I'll see you next time. Thank you. Thanks, Stephen.